All right, everybody good? All right. Uh, first off, I want to thank God Almighty for uh, protecting our deputies, the detectives out there, the federal agents that are out there in our community. Uh, this was a def definitely a dangerous situation. Um, I want to thank Special Agent in Charge Mark Brunel, FDLA. FDLA will be handling this investigation, that partnership, uh, having them come inside and work with us, and their oversight during the investigation is very critical. Um, and all this information right now is still preliminary, it's still going through the investigative standpoint. So our suspect and the person shot today who is expected to recover and is in stable condition, his name is Tom Rose. He is a white male, date of birth, 11-22-83. Uh, Tom has a very uh, long history, criminal history, 35 page rap sheet, 35 pages. Um, he has numerous gun and drug violations, spent over 10 years in state and federal prison. Uh, he is a very violent individual. So last night, uh, he made a statement to somebody, and I want to make sure this is clear because I, I want to set the tone as to the type of person we're dealing with. Last night he made a statement to somebody, he said, if anyone contacts the police, they would have to answer to him and would take, and he will take cops with him. Clearly this individual was not going to go back to prison, and clearly he didn't care who he harmed to make sure he did not go back to prison. Tom Rose had a federal warrant for his arrest, and last night, yesterday, we Pasco County Dispatch got a tip that Tom Rose was at a location in Newport Ritchie. Patrolman K and I went out to the house, he wasn't there, but somebody at the house said he had been there previously. Uh, since Tom Rose's warrant was a federal warrant, the Mar Marshall's Task Force, which we are part of, got involved this morning. Um, our detective was, was assisting with that case. Just to make sure everybody aware, our detectives do not wear BWC. Uh, this shooting was not captured on BWC. Uh, so we're in today, after surveillance and tracking, they followed Tom Rose and they were able to find him at the uh, Home Depot located at Ridge and Little Road. At that point, he flees from law enforcement. It's their pursuit, but the supervisors made a good decision. They reestablished surveillance, and that's what later on we were able to uh, find him because of that surveillance, because of that good job. But I also want to make another clear point. The suspect knew law enforcement was after him. It wasn't a surprise to him to say, oh wow, I'm surprised the cops just showed up at this one point. He knew from the moment we were out there this morning, he knew law enforcement, he fled from us, there was more units involved, he knew law enforcement was chasing him. Around 1.30, our detective who was in plain clothes spotted him at the River Ridge community. He wasn't plain clothes, but the Pasco detective was wearing an outer carrier that was issued by the Pasco Sheriff's Office and it says sheriff on it. Clearly knows that this is a law enforcement officer. Preliminary information shows that the suspect attempted to strike our detective with his vehicle. The detective then fired at the vehicle, forcing the suspect to stop. I go back to it, I thank God Almighty because the suspect, Tom Rose, tried to kill one of our detectives today. I thank God Almighty that detective did a hell of a job ensuring that he was safe and ensuring the community safe. And I will tell you, there's a lot of people watching this right now. You had a mundane day normal day, maybe dropping the kids off, doing your routine, and you know what, God bless you, that's a great day. When you heard the radio traffic of that detective over the radio, you realized his life was in danger. He knew his life was in danger. Somebody was backing up the vehicle at him, attempting to flee. That suspect got what he deserved. If you're willing to kill and try to kill a pastor deputy, a pastor detective, a law enforcement officer in Tampa Bay, you're willing to part or kill anybody. We got him off the streets. He will be in federal prison for a long time. But hearing that detective's voice on that radio, you realize how dangerous that situation was. You realize how, you know, that detective, the training kicked in, everything was going through his mind. He did one hell of a job. And it's a sad day in society where people think, you know, there is no consequences and negative actions. In our community, in our region, there absolutely is. And today, the Pasco deputies, the Pasco detectives did one hell of a job getting them off the street. I thank our federal partners that were out there with us. This is what it's all about, taking violent people off the street. And when those violent people act stupid and they think they're gonna be stupid and they're gonna try to harm one of our people, bad things happen to bad people. And that's what happened. So any questions? Sure. Uh, we know that many times when U.S. Marshals Task Force and your deputies go after wanted felons, these are the most dangerous cases that are out there. Right. Uh, I realize they're all trained professionals, but do they have a different mindset knowing the potential hazards of that situation? Yeah, you know, 
It's one of those things that, you know, throughout our profession now, we don't say anything's routine. There's nothing routine because it could be a, a traffic stop that turns very deadly very quickly. Uh, but when you're dealing with somebody with this type of background, a very violent background, has done federal time, when they start making the statements that I'm going to harm anybody that allows law enforcement to come get me, and I'm going to take law enforcement with me, meaning that he was going to harm law enforcement, yeah, they all have a higher sense. From patrol detectives, the deputies that went out there last night, from canine units that are involved, everybody has an awareness that this isn't going to end peacefully, unfortunately. We strive to and we pray to, but yeah, they have that heightened sense. They go out there. That's why they do uh, the training they do, but it goes back to it. You know, you're a bad guy and we're coming for you. Just turn yourself in peacefully because it could end up like it just did. And I'm sure you have concerns because this started at a Home Depot. We have two, a high school and a middle school near here. There's a lot of families in that neighborhood. Mm -hmm. You know, how do you deal with the potential danger in each one of those scenarios? Uh, it's a great point because throughout the scenarios, whether it's a Home Depot, a very crowded road like Little Road, high schools and schools in the facility, that's where the supervisors did a great job because they realized, okay, let's cut the pursuit off now. We're gonna re-engage surveillance on him. We're gonna find him, which they did. He was found in a residential neighborhood. You go back to it, you don't know what he could have done in that neighborhood. He could have broken into a house. He could have helped people hostage in that neighborhood. Man, it, thank God Almighty, it ended in a way it did that our people are okay, that the community is safe. And that's paramount to us, is that our community is safe. I go back to it, bad things happen to bad people. There's a, a, a nice way of saying it, and I'll try to phrase it down a little bit. You screw around, you find out. You screwed around today, you tried to hurt it, past good detectives, you found out what's gonna happen, we're gonna shoot at it. And it's plain and simple, we're not gonna apologize for it. That's what we do is protect our community. No matter what it takes to do it, we will do it. Sheriff, can you again clarify that officer was on foot or was he in a vehicle? He was not a vehicle, he got out of his vehicle displaying all his um, sheriff's office. He had the outer cavalry vest which we issued. So there's no way from the pursuits that occurred to you know, a detective jumping out of the vehicle, giving him orders, telling him to stop, 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 him not listening, driving that vehicle towards the detective, clearly getting attention, he was gonna harm that detective, that detective had to save his life out there, which he did. And so that detective, just so everybody's aware, has routine policy, he will be put on administrative leave. Um, our agency does wraparound services for him, for the family, because there is a mental health component to it, what he just went through the stress, and so it's routine what we do, but it'll be on paid administrative leave, FDO will be handing the investigation. Just wanna, sorry, I just want to confirm, he wasn't hurt. The suspect? The car. No, the detective. The detective, no, he didn't. Okay. Yeah. What was the warrant for that federal warrant, and why was he afraid and making those threats to others last night? Uh, gun, the charges were gun charges. So as I go back to it, this is a dangerous person who should not be in possession of guns. He was. Uh, he's making threats because I think he realized that somebody may have tipped off to law enforcement that we were out there, and so that's what made him go out there and, you know, basically make those statements that he was not going to go back peacefully. And again, clarify uh, why they uh, may not have been wearing body-worn cameras. Because they're detectives. Our detectives do not wear body-worn cameras. Patrol, uniform, uniform patrol wears the body-worn cameras. Detectives do not because it's the nature of what they do. I mean, they're in plain clothes most of the time, you know, hooking up a body-worn camera. What they do is they're in plain clothes, they're detectives, they're out there in surveillance, doing different things, and they just throw that vest right on top and go do their jobs. All right, everybody. I appreciate it. God bless. Have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, <laughs>